French. The cheese has been curded. Let's pour some gravy on me and dig in. Goes, the whistle blows. For once in my life, I'm actually a part of something. The goalie jumps and the players bump in the He's got it down. Oh. Ah! He's got the stuff. I'll let your ass back up on fire. <laughs> now, I'm not going to lie, during the 15 years Michael and I have hosted this show, we have seen a lot of really bad hockey movies because, you know what, nothing compares to Slapshot except for this movie, Goon. Michael Douse is joining us now. He's the man behind it. It's all gone. Pete Tong and Fubar. Fubar and, How yeah, are you? I'm hard, fine, Michael. thank you. Thank you. Do you I was going to say, do you, <laughs> do you mind that comparison? I mean, because that's one of the first things I said to you as well, is, is there's been this deficit since Slapshot of guys capturing sort of the fabric of, of our game, our passion. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to make, a, to make a hockey comedy without falling under the umbrella of Slapshot. It's yeah. something we were totally conscious of. But, yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't know what it is in, in English language in Canada. You cannot... How do we screw I don't it know. up? It's like it's either they have a there's a chimpanzees, a goalie, or or they yeah. have like a it's a musical or I, I, I don't just know, don't, we don't want to talk the guys about that movie. Fairy or yeah. it's, it's like it's, I think it's because you know when you love something too much and it becomes kind of desperate. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's it's crazy. I mean, that's we all recognize that. Like myself, Jay, and Evan, the screenwriters, the producers, we were all like, "What is going on? Like, why can't we just?" What made them? you guys decide to tackle this though? Because it is a it's a hard thing to do. There's been so many bad ones. What made you guys? We know Jay Baruchel is a huge hockey fan. We've experienced it. But why Les did you guys habitants. come together to do this together? It just it, for me, it, it the opportunity just presented itself. Where I hadn't really in my in my mind, I wasn't like, I have to make a hockey film. But uh, I got to know Jay, and Jay uh, told me about the project and gave me the script and once I read it I said you know let yeah. me know where how I can direct this the logistics of it. actually shooting I mean from your perspective being a director the logistics of actually shooting hockey and making it look good yeah. uh, in, a, in a film version not easy I would imagine no, I mean the first step is you got to get the actors who can skate. Who can skate? Yeah. So that's that's the Who that's, plays La Flamme? I'm, his name is uh, Marc Andre Gondin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he took it very seriously. I mean, he trained for like three or four months with uh, like ex uh, Habs down. You could tell. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's also a use of bottle, body doubles and and stunt doubles and action doubles. So it's a real combination. For me, it was you know I got to play hockey coach where we had yeah. tryouts and we put together a team. <laughs> we you know we designed plays and then had practices. How retentive were you about getting it right, like making sure that it looked good when you were out on the ice and, oh, and just doing it until huge, you nailed huge. it? Huge. I mean, I think the golden rule for me was that don't don't put anything in front of the puck that would slow it down. Yeah. Like like keep the speed of the game. Uh, as well, fast you got as it. Can, it. I was cheering it. during the movie, yeah. and I it was just like yeah. there were four of us screening it yesterday, and we were all cheering for these guys. But we have Laughing, to talk about the yet. fights because I am a little squeamish. Yeah. There are a lot of hockey fights, but they are done so well. How important was to, uh, it for you guys to capture that aspect of the movie? Not go too far, not go too little. Yeah, I mean, it was huge. I mean, we looked at all sorts of films as references, like kung fu movies and, and fight movies, obviously, boxing really? movies, really? hockey movies. Yeah, just to see how they had done fights. And for me, I wanted to put people on the ice and have people, you know, walk a mile in Doug's white skates, you yeah. know, and like ex be there on the ice and feel. And that's why they're brutal, you know, so that, so that people sort of experience what it feels like, you know. A lot of people say, are we glorifying it? But I don't think we are. We're well, just showing what it actually is. I, yeah, exactly. You know? And Sean William Scott, I mean, he does a brilliant job at... at Isn't he amazing? At, he's at, incredible. At, oh, at so not good. only he's being believable down. as a hockey player, but also being believable at kind of sucking at being a hockey player, but being a great <laughs> fighter. Because he it's trained, hard. He trained very hard to be bad. <laughs> Could he actually skate? Yeah, he's he's from Minnesota, so he's like a quarter Canadian already. And, and so he had that in his wheelhouse... He'd done it as a kid, but he, he trained very hard in L.A. We got him a hockey trainer, and then... Um, but Sean carries this movie. He's, yeah. You know, anybody who's a fan of his will appreciate his comedy. All that is in this film, but... On, but Jay Baruchel, too, we have to yeah. talk about, because his character was hilarious. How much fun did you and Jay and everyone have with this part of the movie, the character that Jay's playing? <laughs> it's great. I mean, Jay obviously wrote himself a very nice part. <laughs> he did. Um, <laughs> but it was... Uh, 
Yeah, it was a blast to make this film. It was crazy because we shot it in hockey season, so ice time was at a premium. So our schedule was 11 p.m. Like, until 11 a.m. Just say, like hockey players. You get the old timers <laughs> hockey time, Yeah, right? and we'd hustle. Like on a Friday night, the guy, the manager would be like, you got to get off the ring by 8 a.m. So we'd like, you know, rush like Liev Schreiber, all these like great actors, and then we'd get off the ice and like seven-year-olds would come We out. forgot about Liev <laughs> Schreiber, <laughs> uh, who I didn't realize until the last couple of scenes that that's who I was watching. Like he just, he became, yeah, so amazing. Amazing. He yeah. became that guy. Like yeah, yeah. the old weathered tough guy, working his way down through the ranks. Yeah, he took it. He took it super seriously. I mean, he uh, even down to like perfecting his Canadian accent. We'd be he like, did that a little like, Mike, too you well think too. Uh, my Canadian accent's good? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> That's your territory. Having had the success with It's All Gone Pete Tong and the Food Bar movies, is is there pressure on a director like you to you know repeat that kind of cult success, or do you just go with what you feel? I think you just go with what you feel. Um, I mean, definitely between. Between doing a sequel, you feel the pressure of uh, yeah. of having to, to one up the or be as good as the first one. But now each project, you just sort of do what you do and you know make sure the that you take what you've learned from the Is other. Is there more food bar in our future? Everybody's laughing because <laughs> yeah. we're looking at the B-roll. People just <laughs> love Terry and Diener. Do you think uh, he'll do another one? Yeah, we discussed like t like Fubar 3 Diener in uh, <laughs> like and maybe going to like say no more. But it's more like <laughs> leave it there, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Fubar 3 Diener. Look for that. Oh God. But there is a certain aesthetic to your film. I mean, you've done other stuff as well, and and you yep. know expanded what you're doing and your look and everything. But but there's just such a. Um, I, I guess a sensibility to the type of film that you make and what you bring to it that that is really approachable and yet at the same time it's still beautiful art. It's a beautiful story. Oh, thanks. I mean, I, I think what I always try and bring is is definitely a sense of humor. Obviously, they're funny and I maintain the tone of humor. But I think the other consistent thing in my films is all of them have a heart to yeah. it, and that's. And that's what you'll see in Goon. I mean. And I think yeah. people will genuinely be rooting for these guys, despite the fact that it's it's all, you know. But this fiction. is Canada. We love the goons. Like, I remember the first time that Gino Ojek <laughs> played in Vancouver, right. and he beat the hell out of half of the St. Louis Blues, and people went nuts and fell in love with him right there because you recognize that this was a guy who would do anything for it. He would bleed yeah. for them, and that's part of to. that's part of what what we're trying to do, showing like what they do. I mean, obviously they fight, but Hard they also job. they also inspire people. There's also a great sense of sportsmanship to the role that we wanted to show people, where you know it's a very gentlemanly sport, yeah. despite how violent. Do you it want is. to go? Yes, I would. Yes, Thank you exactly. For asking. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Which is a real. We took that right from a right from a Phoenix Coyotes game, you where, where really? George Larac was mic'd up. He had this this conversation with the guy he was about to fight, where he I lines up and he that. goes. How you doing? Good. You want to go? Yeah. Okay. Good luck, bud. Yeah. And they drop. And the then away and they go. go. Yeah. And he, he was actually in there, wasn't he? And he's in. Yeah. That's why we did it in that scene because we got so George. beautiful. Well, Michael, thank you so much. Don't miss Goon. It opens Friday, February 24th in theaters everywhere. If you love hockey, you will fall in love with this movie. Yeah, definitely. Turn down the suck <laughs> and turned up the good on Canadian hockey films. It's a little referenced. Thanks, there, Michael. <laughs> right after this. Uh,